It's going to pop up here in one second. Bear with me. All right. This gets the kids, you know, now you're on your fourth lesson. They've been flying, but you haven't really let them land. And maybe they're getting a little antsy. They want to do something different. Maybe see a different airplane. So this one, you go to quick flight setup and you tell them, hey, folks, you're going to get to fly a King Air. King Air is a great twin engine plane. And it's not the most modern airplane. It's been around for a bit, but it's still very, very efficient and uh, pretty powerful. We, I have a, a former student of mine flying a mo highly modified King Air over in Afghanistan. Uh, he points out to the Army, helps the Army coordinate who the, when they're attacking the bad guys. So here we go. We go open aircraft. We've done this before. We go up to general aviation. I want to go to um, King Air right there. And there's the King Air. All right, everything else is pretty much clear. If you haven't changed anything, let's make it 8 o'clock again. Okay. So there we are, King Air. We're going back here. We're going to do a final approach. All right, I'm going to pause it. Now we've got to go ahead and set our data. This one we can go ahead and do... Really, so I'm going to settings, data input, output. I've got airspeed. You can leave lift and drag up there if you want. Really, though, we're just going to be looking at um, airspeed and landing, ugh, landing gear deployment. You know, I really le should learn how to talk. That'd be helpful for a teacher. All right, so here we go. We're going to drop the landing gear here in a minute. I'm going to unpause it here and... See if I can fly us. And what you're going to get the kids to do is see if they add landing gear, what does that do to their airspeed? What we're trying to get out of this is we're adding drag. And there's two types of drag, parasitic and induced. Parasitic drag is drag from the structure. That's just sticking your hand out. Induced is that drag as a result of lift, like we saw earlier. That airfoil creates lift, but it also creates some drag. But as you saw, it's great big green lines with just a little bit of red. You're getting lots and lots of lift and just a little bit of drag, that induced drag. Now, you're not going to see a huge change in airspeed here with landing gear. The airplane designers do a very good job of making it so those are as drag-free as possible on the landing gear. So you can drop the landing gear, you're going to see it. And in fact, a lot of modern aircraft aren't even retractables. They can uh, smooth it out enough that the trade-off you have is if you retract the landing gear, now we got to have motors to pull the landing gear up. Plus, pilots that are retracting landing gear have been known to land without their landing gear. So what they've gone to, and uh, I'm thinking of uh, Cirrus and some of the other ones, is they tend to not have retractables and... They just make it very aerodynamically smooth, and they don't have to use the weight of the retracts. All right? So here it is. There's the landing gear. That's a good example of parasitic drag. Go ahead. And, you know, there's the lift lines. You can see the red induced drag up on top. So the kids do this. They uh, fly, fly, for le uh, fly at level, try to fly at level for three seconds with the gear up. They observe the airspeed. They try fly it again level for three seconds with the gear down. You get the gear down, by the way, and I'll show you right here. Um, the screen here, let me see if I move it over. Move this, go to our webinar here. Right there's the landing gear. It's up, or is it down? It's down, and you can move it there. Notice the red lights to warn you, hey, you're about to land without it. There it's with it up. You can also hit the letter G. So there's a couple ways to do it. Right here is where we're going to change our flaps. We'll just go full and open. All right. Now, let's go on to the next one, please. All right, so... 
they're doing that. We talk with the kids about flaps. Now you're going to go back, fly the airplane, and we're going to go ahead and put the flaps down. There you're going to see a more dramatic, you'll see a difference in airspeed. You're going to see a, you're going to be able to look at lift and drag. Okay. So to do that lesson, we're going to go back over here, setting, data input and output. Okay. 13 is going to be, this will tell us if we've got our flaps out there or not. Wing lift, wing drag. All right. And I don't think we need to worry about, again, landing gear deployment here. So they're right up here. So you're going to ask the kids to fly it for a few seconds. You know, consistently true seconds. Look at their, write down what their airspeed's doing, whether the flaps are up or down, the amount of lift and the amount of drag. Then you're going to go down here, pull the drag down. Watch what happens the minute you unpause this. Immediately lifts up, because remember, it's adding more lift to it. So it wants to pop up. So let me show you again. Landing gears right here, up and down. This is no flaps, this is extended flaps. And this is on the twin air. A uh, Cessna 172 doesn't, the Cessna does, does not have retractable gear, so you don't have to worry about the gear on that one. And uh, the flaps, I can, next time we bring up the 172, I can show you where the flaps are on that. If you look on the screen, you'll see it. Okay, let's get out of X playing. And see, what's great about all this is you got the kids flying, and they see immediately that what they're changing matters. And, you know, I mean, they're getting ready. They're going to learn how to land here in a second. So this makes all this very relevant to the kids. Whoops. Let me shut that down. Let me go ahead and pull this out. This is just annoying. All right. And there's the flaps from the drawing we had. They're going to fill out their tables, graph the tables, and, and they'll have an idea what flaps do or don't do to it. Okay? Now, this would be, these lessons one and two, don't be shocked if they go a little bit longer. I'm trying to get a lot done there. Three and four tend to be a little bit shorter, particularly for... And five is this maybe could be the shortest one of all because they get to practice landing in it. So don't worry if one and two, you're at the third day and you've only done two lessons. There's really makeup time in this. Or you can make it as long as you want. Because one thing I found too is when you teach the kids to the land, it's all about the thrust. And so they're going to learn to control the thrust. They are playing that fourth force. And what's really great about this, too, is you can have air races. You can get the kids very psyched up about this. So this is a lot of fun. All right. Now let me go ahead and do that. Okay. So in this lesson, you're going to go ahead, hit the four forces of flight. You're going to talk about thrust. And what you're going to find out very quickly is that most people want to control the airplane by pointing the nose down. But hopefully by now your kids know, hey, if I point the nose down, well, what's going to happen? Well, my airspeed's going to go up. My airspeed's going to go up. What is that going to do to the amount of lift? Ah, there's going to be a lot more lift. So it's that classic trade-off of, wow, how am I going to do this? So let's go ahead. And really, what they're going to do is they're going to practice landing. That's going to take them 15 or 20 minutes. And don't worry if the, so many kids never learn how to land. We have the AI on the computer for them. However, and so if you can't land, don't worry about it. It's, some kids are going to land really quickly. Other kids are not. 
And if you do land, you'll you know quickly you can get the respect of them. You can go ahead and land and show it to them. But uh, don't sweat it in either case. Just uh, so let's go ahead, pop back out. You're gonna just stress to them. Landing's all about controlling that thrust. Let me go pop that down. Pull this back up. All right, I don't have the disc in there, and that's why it's giving us that funny and funky meshes. I want. I left it out tonight. I mean to show you that message, so you know what it is. So if you come up as a teacher, and you're trying to figure it out. All right, here we go. So we're going to be go back, go in back to your aircraft on this, and you're going to want to select the Cessna again. So we're at Cessna, we're going to be coming down for final approach, we're going to hit X. Alright, I want to pause this a second. One thing too you want to make sure you've got going here is let's make sure under aircraft, and this is probably not a bad idea, if you've got different classes into it, make sure your weight and everything's at like right around 298. Uh, we have found that sometimes kids will come in, they're redoing lesson two or something and they change that weight and then oh my gosh. Your plane's not flying right. So just every once in a while, check that over. Also, let's go ahead and we're going to real quickly just turn this all off so we don't have to look at anything. All right, so now we got a clear screen. We're going to come in and fly. We're going to control this with either that black knob or the mouse. You can roll the wheel. If you've got a wheel on your mouse, you can back it out there. We're going to spend a lot looking at this, measures the RPM, this tachometer. We're going to bring it down to about 1600 as we get here. So we're going to unpause. All right, and then what I'm going to do, if I roll the mouse forward on my mouse, it's running my RPM down to 1600. Also, look at the uh, lights on the runway. Pappy, um, there. The important thing to get out of this is precision approach indicator, by the way, is what the formal name for this is. But what it does is think of it this way you want to see three, you want to see two red lights, two white lights. You're in the right, what they call glide slope. You're coming in at the right angle. Because remember, we're not trying not to point the nose down. All right. I really don't have my nose. It's down a little bit right at this moment, but not a lot. We're not trying to point the nose down. We want the whole plane just to kind of slowly uh, drop out of the sky would be a way to describe it, I guess. So here I am. I'm looking at those lights. If I see all white, they say overflight. I'm going to overshoot the runway, which, all things considered, is not the end of the world if you can't land. It's not wrong with going back and relanding. Red, white, you're all right. All red, you're dead. So if you're red, it means you're coming in too close. And as a pilot, the simplify things, I think, is just re-watching your, watching that approach, and you're watching your airspeed. All right? We've got plenty of lift and whatnot. Now, if you see the white on the uh, instrument here, that means if I got flaps, I can fly all the way down to 40 knots. Where it's green, that's really no flaps. And if I go more than 120 or 40, I got problems. Notice I'm not, I don't have the flaps on yet because I'm flying a little fast. That would be hard on the flat on the aircraft. So we're going to pause. I've reduced my engine. I'm keeping my cursor right on there. Also, it takes patience for the kids to get this. But just imagine, it's really fun for the kids when they all start doing this to uh, land on the aircraft. 
And if you've got them all, your computer's networked together, the kids can all fly online together in the network. But save that, something like that, towards the end. And, you know, that's something to save special for them, I think. So I'm a little low. I'm pulling up my nose a little bit. It's going to bleed off airspeed. All the real pilots in here don't smirk at me too much. See, I've got my flaps. I'm flying a small airplane, so I can afford to be a little bit. I got plenty of runway. I'm not even going to mess with the flaps in this flight right now. See the lights? I got one white, three reds. Feeling pretty good because I'm that close to the runway. Notice I'm not moving my cursor all over the place. Okay, I'm getting over the runway. Bounced a little bit. Go ahead, hit the brakes. All right, so I kept it on the center line. So a reasonable job. All right, folks. So that's really all it is, is you're really just controlling it with thrust. The kid's going to want to point the nose down, swing it every which way. Don't. Just take your time. That's the other thing I think surprises them more than anything in the beginning, is that you, you know, you're not going to land in 10 seconds. This is not a toy. This flies like what an airplane is. And really, in real life, you would fly around the airport before you landed. Uh, but this is that's the nice thing about being virtual. We can just do the final approach and uh, have the kids land on it. 